More Pokemon cards? You all know the drill. Alright, these took a while to get here. Uh, of course, Amazon is uh, busy with Christmas stuff. So, probably going to be the only Pokemon unwrapping that we do for December, guys. But, like I said, we're technically almost done with the first base set. And I'm not going to finish any of these unboxings until I have completed base set one. I wrote whichever one's down. It's basically what I need is just the special illustrated cards. But that's not for today's episode. Today's episode is what we did for uh, October. Halloween movies, but instead we're going to talk about Christmas movies. And yes, Christmas is not one of my favorite holidays. Uh, I'm Halloween, I'm New Year's, you know. Yeah, Christmas is just too festive for me. I appreciate it. I'm in Florida. We don't really get Christmas-y. It's rain, wind, slightly cold, sometimes too cold, rainy. But yeah, but let's start off. All right, first Christmas movie up. Who doesn't love the old-time classic favorite episode, Charlie Brown's Christmas? Now, growing up, we had two separate Charlie Brown Christmas movies. We had the traditional one, um, It's Christmas Time, Charlie Brown, and then, again, It's Christmas Time Again, Charlie Brown. You probably don't really know that one. A lot of people don't. My mom actually found that one at a BP gas station back in the probably mid-90s. Always classic time favorites, you know, uh, Peanuts Gang, Gang, and Peanuts Gang. God, you cannot speak today. Um, there's a lot of good ones that a lot of people don't know about. Like, um, it's New Year's Charlie Brown. Uh, one that I remember growing up that they showed pretty rarely was the episode where Linus has a girlfriend. I, I think it's a girlfriend. It's this girl that's got cancer and everything and I don't really know and also Snoopy's Nightmare is a very uh abnormal episode but the Christmas ones are you know always good and all the holiday ones are great whether you have the controversy between with the Thanksgiving episode which you know as you get older I got older I was like yeah something doesn't seem right here but what I did like about um, I do like Peppermint Patty and Marcy. I like them in moderation. I actually liked Marcy more growing up. I just couldn't stand Peppermint Patty. I thought she was in, an annoying character. But I like the first Christmas episode because she's not in it. I, yeah, I don't know. She's not in that one. But she's in the second episode. Really not much to say. You, everyone knows Snoopy. Everyone knows Charlie Brown. Let's just move on. So we've got Drifloom. We've got Cat... Flittle, Saviper, Toad School, Thing, Vitality Band, Thing, Dedenne, Thing. <sighs> Seems garbage. Second one. Now, a lot of you are not going to know this one. It has been me and my sister's probably top three. It's in the top three best Christmas movies. If you want to call it a movie as small that it is. I mean, it's the Charlie Brown movie is only 30 minutes long. Probably not even that. But this one first appeared on, I want to say, ABC or Fox back in the mid-90s as well. And it's one that Robert Downey Jr. does not like to talk about. <laughs> Even though I love him in it so much. And I think he sang just amazingly. And it's one that they have never put on DVD before. We, we have to watch it now on YouTube. And I hope it never goes off. And that is Mr. Willoughby's Christmas Tree. It is, yes, it is a Muppet movie. Um, a lot of you know that the two Christmas movies that the Muppets did, um, Christmas Carol, from uh, by, by Charles Dickens, and then there's uh, the Muppets Christmas movie, which takes place on Fozzie's mom's farm. And that kind of kind of combines all the Jim Henson characters. You have Sesame Street, you have the Muppets, you've got Fraggles. Um, I think that's it. And it's also got the man that played Doc and Sprocket. And I wanted to say that when I was back at when I worked at Duncan, there was this guy that um, that worked with me. I think his name was Graham. And we had talked about you know if they ever did make Final Fantasy movies who would they have to be able to pick to play 
you know, the actors to play the characters. And one that always came to my mind was Headmaster Sid from Final Fantasy VIII always reminded me of Doc from Fraggle Rock. And of course, Doc died, passed away a long time ago, but he would have been perfect. I think he had a charm. He had the twinkle in the eye. I think, I don't really know anything about his real life stuff, but I loved him growing up. He was kind of an asshole. We're getting off topic. Mr. Willoughby's Christmas tree. It does. It has Kermit in the beginning, uh, towards the end and the very end. But it's not about him. It's about Mr. Willoughby trying to find the perfect Christmas tree. He gets it. But at the same time, uh, these uh, house guests of his that are the mice, you see them in Christmas Carol. Uh, no cheeses for his nieces, basically. And they're trying to find the perfect tree as well. But then they go from Mr. Willoughby to his housekeeper, to bears, then to owls, and then finally back to them. And it's just a great movie. And they combine so much within a, a half an hour. It, it's just beautiful. And I love Mr. Willoughby's Christmas tree. I can't wait to show it to my kids. So, yeah. Uh, we have Flittle, Viper again, Hounder, this thing, Muck, the Villian, Dog, Magneton, Gravar, which I've already got, Sexy Cat. Damn. All right. Next up, what is Christmas without having uh, Clark W. Griswold and Christmas Vacation? Gotta love it. Christmas Vacation. I could not get enough of that movie growing up. My dad would kind of um, keep the movie from us. Now, my dad was very strict with uh, with us as kids. Like We were only allowed to watch Christmas movies from December 1st to the 25th. And you were allowed to kind of watch some of the other ones. This is what I remember growing up. My mom and my sister probably will deny this, but I remember that. We were only allowed to watch Christmas Vacation twice and dad was very like like he would keep the vhs away from us so we didn't watch it so much and everything and i i would always uh try to get it as best i can but when we got it on dvd hell i watched it a lot i don't really watch it much anymore um I man i do maybe just once a year or just put it on before going to bed and everything or being the first one up on christmas morning and just popping it in while everyone's sleeping make some coffee or you know, it's one of those movies that you watch like like Christmas Story. We'll get to that in a sec. But how can you not love Christmas Story? It is just, and I've always had a huge crush on Beverly D'Angelo. Um, yeah, yeah, watch European Vacation, and you you'll know why. Even a uh, uh, Vacation as well, and also the sister that's in um, Christmas Vacation. I think she was my favorite. She was. Um, Probably the, one of the reasons I liked girls like that growing up. But, and, and if you don't, the guy that played, uh, is it Randy, Randy Quaid? Yeah, whether you love him or hate him, he did make that movie funny. I mean, Chevy Chase is funny enough. I mean, I know it's hard, a lot of people found it hard working with the man. Because he's an asshole. That's why Saturday Night Live will never have him on there again. But, and of course you've got Ellen, Elaine from, uh, from Seinfeld, who's just so damn sexy in that. Even her, the guy that's, that she's married to, or I guess it's her fiancé or boyfriend, who the hell they are. But I mean, you've got the, you got the squirrel in the tree, you've got the dog, snot. It's probably the only movie that you could tell, next to Christmas Story, that we can all say that we've had experiences at one point on a Christmas, whether our parents went through it or as we went through it, you know, as we got older. But anyway, Hound Door. God, that's just the third damn thing. Magic Car, Mag... Ugh, ugh, ugh. Another damn... <laughs> ugh, God. It ain't even worth it. I know, I know I'm getting angry, but I know it's getting harder to find the ones that you need, but damn... Give me something. Uh, let's move on to Christmas Story. Because the Christmas Story will be up next then. It's always a classic. And everyone, you know, nowadays kind of pokes fun of it by being a very racist movie. You know what? I don't give a damn. I honestly don't give a rat's ass. 
I enjoyed it as a kid. I'm going to show my kids Christmas story growing up. You know, I don't believe this this defiance of boycotting movies because they're politically not correct now, but what does that matter? Most of the songs and most of the movies, you know, that came, you know, pretty much at the beginning of recording could be interpreted as inappropriate. Who cares? You enjoy it, just watch it. If you don't enjoy it, go fuck yourself. <laughs> and I do mean that. Don't ruin it for everybody else. You know, that's that's the problem with... Well, we won't get into that. We'll, I don't want to get into that part. <laughs> but, Christmas Story. <sighs> I could identify myself a lot with uh, Ralph. Um, my dad was kind of like his dad. My mom kind of was like his mom. And, of course, Lauren, my sister, was nothing like uh, Randy, even though... I would be Randy, she would be Ralph, Ralphie. And yes, I love Christmas Story, but another, uh, the reason I bring Christmas Story up is not so much for that one. It's the second movie that they came up with that has never seen a DVD release, and that is Ollie Op Noodles Havens of Bliss, which is the same family, but they go on vacation, and it has never been reintroduced. Yes, you can watch it on YouTube. You can buy extremely vintage copies of VHSs, which are horribly expensive. Yeah, but it, if you ever do, it's Ollie Hop Noodles Havens of Bliss, or just type in Christmas Story uh, Movie Vacation Part 2 or something on Google, and it'll, it'll show you, but there's really not a call whole lot of information and the first part of the movie involves the dog going missing and then they kind of forget about the dog after they get him back and then they go on vacation i mean that's about it but christmas story identify greatly with that you know the the peer pressure of your friends the bullies the um you want a certain gift you know like how i remember waiting for pokemon uh, uh my game boy color kingdom hearts one um, Orphan. Uh, that's a, that's an old game. My PlayStation 2. There's been a lot of things that I have, you know, that I can identify with Ralphie wanting the, the BB gun and everything. The Red Rider BB gun. But yeah. Great movie. I am still going to watch it for years to come. I have not really sat down and watched the movie in full for maybe a half a decade now. It's because I just pop it in when I'm decorating the tree and just don't think anything of it. Or I pop it in while I'm cooking or something like that. But that's about it. Another great movie to watch. Shup it. Mouse. Thing. Ape. This thing. Another thing. This thing. Quaxley. Dog. Sexy cat. Alright. Next. Oh boy. You know what I love about Christmas? You can get horror movies out of Christmas. And let's talk about one that I absolutely love. And it's just one of those that they could have screwed up and it would have been an absolute piece of garbage. And that was Krampus. And drinking too much eggnog. Okay, well, sorry guys, um, if you're just now tuning in, you're probably wondering what the hell happened. Uh, the video cut off. I don't know what happened. So, you see that front part? I think we talked about Krampus and Violent Night, so, sorry. Technology, what are you going to do? But, I want to talk about, let's start, uh, with the real Ghostbusters episode, where the ghosts of Christmas get busted. And this is one of my absolute favorite episodes of The Real Ghostbusters, from the beginning of The Real Ghostbusters. And a full a full preview of this, you can watch it on Google, uh, on YouTube. Also, Phelis did a great review on this one as well, so I'll keep it short. Basically, The Real Ghostbusters go to this house, and they help this woman. But for some reason, they get stuck in a time warp that's a blizzard, and then end up in England... In the eighteen hundred, in the eighteen hundreds, and meet Ebenezer Scrooge, who was a character in a book of Charles Dickens, but apparently was a real person in the real Ghostbusters world. 
and he's just being visited all at once from the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future. And so the Ghostbusters bust them. And Scrooge is, becomes even more of an asshole and then writes a book about how Christmas is just basically bullshit and then the whole world adopts this. So the Ghostbusters have to go get the ghost back but at the same time they got to keep Scrooge you know thinking that the ghosts are still you know trying to teach him a lesson so Ray dresses not Ray uh Bankman is it Bankman? No. Yeah, Stance, Bankman, Egon, Ray Stance. So Ray, yeah. No. Oh god, I can't even think now. It's I'm still mad about this video cutting off at the other two. But, guys, as you can see, I have not gotten any new cards, so, you know, pretty much bust. But anyway, at the end, so they release the ghosts, and they, like, kick Scrooge's ass. And everyone's back to normal. Like I said, Phalus has a great, great review on this. Check his channel out, guys. I love Phalus. Phelan, he does a lot of good stuff with real Ghostbusters and everything. But... Also check out that episode too. It's the Real Ghostbusters. Just type in Real Ghostbusters Christmas Carol and it will definitely give you that on YouTube. But we have Clotcher, we have Squawkabilly, Skidoo, Capsicum, this thing, Vitality Band, this thing. Ooh, but we do have a new one. What is this thing? And we have, oh, sorry. We have a King Bit. I don't know if we have him. We'll put him on the side. But look at this one. This is a Mabostiv. Mabostiv? Intimidating Hell. So we know we don't have this one, so it's one of the special illustrated cards, so I'm glad we got that one on film. As for the other King Gambit, I don't know. Do we have him? Have we seen him before? I think we have. But we'll just put him to the side. Alright, last one, guys. Alright. And finishing up Christmas for my family was always... On Christmas Eve, watching one of our favorite movies, and a lot of you may not know this character. If you grew up in the 90s, you will know the name of Opus the Penguin. And A Wish for Wings That Work is the last movie we ever watch before we go to bed and then have Christmas morning. A Wish for Wings That Work, yes, it's about Opus, and you have Bill the Cat, and pretty much he Opus is trying to ask Santa for wings and your know, penguins don't fly so he's trying to get santa to give him wings that actually will let him fly and everyone's making fun of him like the seagulls they're like you know you can't fly you know because you're a penguin you're not supposed to fly you're supposed to swim he tries to go to this uh therapy therapy place where he's got like the kiwi and the Psycho Chicken, and then it goes to the Cockroaches, Crossdressers, and Crisis. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, pretty much at the end, he meets Santa. He saves Santa from drowning, basically, because no one else can swim, because Santa crashes into a lake. And pretty much, he, he just tells Opus, basically, that, you know... You have wings that fly, but you fly in different ways. And in the end, Bill the Cat kind of rallies all the seagulls together to kind of help Bill fly, even though they're flying, but he's, you know, soaring in the air, which kind of weird that they didn't think of that in the beginning. But it's a great movie, you know, it's always one that makes me smile. And it's always kind of hard for us to watch that one because, you know, we're not a complete family anymore. But, you know, always, always remember our big guy. But yeah, let's finish it up, guys. So, Caps Kid, Potion, Weasel, this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing, anything, please. And Professor's Research, which we've already got. Well, that's it, guys. Like I said, I do apologize for the cut. And like I said, you did not miss anything. I, I know this is a new one. I have no idea if we have this one yet. But yeah. Well, happy holidays to everyone. Um... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get any more cards by the time January rolls around or before Christmas rolls out. So, I mean, we're going to keep doing this until we have all of base set one of the Scarlet and Violet. And I will see you next time. Thanks again.
and drinking too much eggnog.